in general, we can write a gx as this, as a0 plus a1x plus a2x here. a0, a1x are integer to be determined or determined by you or can be an unknown, okay? And x here are just the variable x. And the first guy is actually x to the power zero, okay? And we add until infinity, okay? And then let's say we consider a uh, one set and I call the set E1. That means there's only one element, E1. So how many ways can we select nothing? Zero element. That's one way, right? So, and how many ways can we select one element? There's one element here. So there's only one way to select one element, right? So we have these two men. How many ways can we select two elements from this set? Well, there's only one element, so you cannot select two from them. So therefore, it's zero way to select more than one element. So if I have this free number in this color, and if you look at here, this one represents there's a one way to select zero element. This blue one corresponds to one way to select one element from x. And other way are all zero. So this in the end becomes one plus x. And now let's look at this example. Suppose I have a set with two elements, e1 and e2. How many ways to select nothing? One way, right? How many ways to select one element? You either pick e1 or you pick e2. Okay, you have two ways. How many ways to select two elements? Well, you can pick uh okay, in this case, okay, this should be one, okay. This is wrong, okay? So how many ways you to pick one uh, two elements? E1, E2, okay? Suppose we consider a combination, okay? How many ways you can select more than two elements? No way, right? So you have this, okay? So if I have a set with just one thing, the number of ways to select the element is summarized in this polynomial. And if I have a set with two things, E1 and E2, the way to select the elements without ordering, no ordering, because we are now considering com com combination, okay? Is summarized in this polynomial. One plus two x plus x squared, you know from high school, is what? It's one plus x squared, right? So 1 plus x squared means I can write it as 1 plus x times 1 plus x, right? And what is 1 plus x? 1 plus x is this guy. What does this guy mean? It means how do you select one element from a single set? Now I have two of them. So you can think of it as this is the expression summarizing how you can select object from a single set. This is an expression summarizing how many ways you can select things from a single set. But now this set is another set, that's E2. What is the dot? This is product rule. These two are different sets, so it's a Cartesian product. So by product rule, we have a dot. So that means what? This is the summary of how you select a single set. This is the summary of how you select uh, two element sets or two sets. And they are polynomial. Also agree with the math you have learned. And to be honest, you know this already. This is exactly by normal expansion of 1 plus x to the power k. Okay? Here is a special case, k is 2. So what are these? This is saying that polynomial, the coefficients give you the number of ways to select elements. And the power of the x is telling you the the element you choose. For example, x squared means you select two elements. A2 means how many ways you can select two elements. Okay? With this powerful technique in mind, suddenly counting becomes very simple. Okay? So this thing has a name called generating function. Okay? Generating function also relates to something called sequence. So what is sequence? So for example, I have a sequence of 6, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1. What is the generating function? I just write the generating function by treating the first guy as the coefficient of x0. So basically, I'm mapping x0, multiply this guy, multiply this guy, multiply this guy, multiply this guy, and then together I sum of them. So this gives me this thing. So that means what? If, if, okay, if I have a definition of a sequence defined like this, for n is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, fn output a 1, otherwise give me a 0, which basically is this thing. If I write it as a list, this is the 1, 1, 1, 1, okay? Or if I write as a general function, I have this. This three things are the same thing, okay? Are the same thing. And then this generated function is very powerful. We will know very soon, but I'm telling you these three things are the same thing. And how do you create a generated function? Here are the approach. Suppose I have a sequence 0, 1, 2, 3, 0, 1, 2, 3. Then the generated function will be what? Okay, I just put power x0, x1, x2, x3. So it will give me this, okay? So what about a sequence 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, and non stop? Then I will have the same thing. This is x1, x3, x5, x7, and so on, okay? And here's another example of showing how powerful it is for generating function. So suppose I have a dictionary, that's a prefix, vowel, and suffix. So a word must be started with a prefix, followed by a vowel, and end with a suffix. So suppose I give you a dictionary like this. How many words can you build from this? So if you don't know the generation function, you have to draw 27 outcome. There are four length three words, these are all length three. 12 length four words, okay. Nine length five words, okay. And two length six words, okay. So suppose I ask you, how many length five words are there? If you don't write them down by brute force, how do you answer this? You are going to do generate function. So how to count the number of length 5 words without enumeration? That means without listing them. We will use generate function. So suppose I write this QUST as a variable x. So these are prefix. These are vowel. These are suffix. So I have three sets. I have three sets. 
I'm now selecting element from free disjoint set. Remember what is this? Cartesian product. Now I write it in what? Polynomial. Polynomial. I just write fx times gx. I don't write the cross, right? So I treat this qust as a polynomial. I treat this aioi as a polynomial. And I write like this. What about the thing inside the set? Well, the thing inside the set is like a or relationship, right? In or, what's the combinatorial? Sum rule. So I have a sum here. Okay? I have a sum here. What about the multiplication? Product rule, Cartesian product. So that's why I have a multiplication here. That's where I thought, but I don't draw dot because in polynomial you don't draw dot. And then what's next? We don't care about what exactly is the ruling, so we replace all the symbols by just x. So that means here you have x, 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 x. You have x and x, you have x and x. And then for math, you know this two can become the 2x, okay? And this one become the x squared, okay? So you get from this bracket to this, this bracket. And similarly, for this bracket, you get you this bracket. This bracket give you this bracket. And then what's next? You multiply the bracket together. This is high school math, right? Give you this one. So now I'm asking, what's the length 5 word? That means I just look for the coefficient of x5 of this guy, which is 9. 9. Is there 9 length 5 word? Let's check. 1. This is 2. 5 symbol. This is 3. 5 symbol. This is 4. 5 symbol. 5. 5 symbol. 6. 5 symbol. 7. 8. 9. This is not 5 symbol. This is 6 symbol. So no. This is 6 symbol. So that's all the length 5 word. 9. 9. That's correct. So let ax be the generating function for selecting item from set A, and let b be the generating function for selecting item from set B. Then, what is the product rule? You know it's a Cartesian product. C is A set Cartesian product B, right? Then, for the polynomial version, you just multiply them. Okay? What about the sum rule? Sum rule for disjoint set is basically addition for polynomial. Okay? That's it. This is the product rule, the sum rule. You may wonder, is there a subtraction rule? Is there a division rule? Is there inclusion exclusion principle in polynomial form? Yes, there is a polynomial form in generating function for all the combinatorial rules you have learned. But those are two are one for this course. So those include differentiation, integration, and some other crazy thing. But those are too complicated. For let's say you have a0 plus a1x plus a2x squared. And then let's say you have a bx here. A bunch of things. It's possible you will need to do this, which is a0 plus a1 bx plus a2 bx square and so on and this thing is very long you need to expand a lot of terms and then you need to simplify for this course we are only focusing on the most basic version so for this kind of crazy thing won't appear okay